billion, trillion, million, billion, trillions of orbiting snowballs, orbiting snowballs, orbiting. A flat fact. A flat fact. The realm. Do you know what the realm is? A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I have a medical paper I'd like to share with you. The paper is from the American Society for Biology and was published ahead of print on the 8th of June 2009. The paper demonstrates the effectiveness of a widely used drug showing a 98.6% survival and showed to have long-lasting protective effects against the lethal version of the coronavirus HCOV-0C43 infection in newborn mice. HCOV-19 is not considered lethal unless you are an already at risk person. Before I get into this paper, there have been more papers published on this drug and the replacement for this drug in the years since. So wait for all the information. I'm not going to read the entire paper and I will leave the link in the description. So we'll start here. Further we investigated whether chloroquine could prevent HCOV-0C43 induced death in newborn mice. Our results show that a lethal HCOV-0C43 infection in newborn mice can be treated with chloroquine acquired transplacentally or via maternal milk. The highest survival rate, 98.6% of the pups, was found when the mother mice were treated daily with a concentration of 15 mg of chloroquine per kilogram of body weight. Survival rates declined in a dose-dependent manner, with 88% survival when treated with 5 mg per kilo chloroquine and 13% survival when treated with 1 mg per kilo chloroquine. Our results show that chloroquine can be highly effective against HCOV-0C43 infection in newborn mice and may be considered as a future drug against HCOVs, human coronaviruses. This document was published in 2008, ladies and gentlemen. Before I get to chloroquine, let's just see what coronaviruses are. They are large envelope single-stranded positive sense RNA viruses with a genome of approximately 30 kilobytes in length and they are the largest found in any of the RNA viruses. The genus coronavirus belongs to the family coronaviridae in the order of nidovirals. The coronaviruses are classified into three groups based on genetic and serological relationships. Now do these viruses jump species? Can they be killed in the cooking process? Group 1 contains porcine epidemic diarrhea virus, porcine transmissible gastroenteritis virus, canine coronavirus, feline infectious peritonitis virus, human coronavirus 229E, I'm not reading all the numbers, Group 2 contains murine hepatitis virus, bovine coronavirus, rat. So in Group 1, the animals that are affected are the porcine family, the canine family with canine coronavirus, felines, the humans. Group 2 contains murine, murine hepatitis virus, bovine coronavirus, so bovines or your cows. Rat, porcine is also in the group two, canine, and equine. So we've got the pigs, the dogs, the cats, the cows, the bison, the goats, the rats, the horses. And then in group three, group three thus far contains only avian coronaviruses, such as infectious bronchitis virus and turkey coronavirus. What is chloroquine? Does that sound familiar to you? 
Chloroquine is a medication used to prevent and treat malaria in areas where malaria is known to be sensitive to its effects. Certain types of malaria, resistant strains and complicated cases typically require different or additional medication. Now what would be that additional medication for those resistant strains? Let's look at the World Health Organization positional statement as of 2012. The World Health Organization recommends artemisian-based combination therapy for the treatment of uncomplicated malaria due to Plasmodium falciparum. Artemisian is known by a more common name that would be wormwood or absinthe. Absinthe was banned for a hundred and something years. Absinthe is regulated by the Food and Drug Administration and until recently was completely banned in the US and most of Europe. The reason for this is that absinthe contains thujone, a toxic chemical found in several edible plants including tarragon, sage and wormwood. Tarragon and sage are herbs that are frequently used in cooking and wormwood had been used for hundreds of years before the ban for removing parasites from the body. Wormwood is also stated as being used by the Chinese for thousands of years. So let's continue with the World Health Organization's 2012 positional statement. These artemisian-based combination therapies combine an artemisian derivative such as artemetha, Artensiae or Didro Artemisian with an effective antimalarial medicine. The five currently recommended Artemisian based therapies are listed in the WHO guidelines for the treatment of malaria 2010. 1. A number of herbal remedies made of Artemisia annua. Dry leaves are suggested for the treatment of malaria, however, the World Health Organization does not recommend the use of Artemisia annua plant material in any form, including tea, for the treatment or the prevention of malaria. This World Health Organization recommendation is based on the review of scientific findings. Firstly, the content of Artemisian in the leaves is influenced by many genetic, agricultural and environmental factors. So the World Health Organization recommends that you don't have wormwood, dry the leaves and make a tea out of it or have it any other way. In the treatment of malaria, it must be a prescribed dose. America burns acres and acres of wormwood every year. The active ingredient identified in the Artemisia wormwood plant is thujone, T H U J. O -N -E. There are other plants that contain thujone, the Nucta cypress, some junipers, mugwort, oregano, common sage and tansy. Quinine can also be found in some tonic waters. And that's all I have to say now. Bye.